Hi, I'm Linda Tyone, and I am a programmer here at Shorts Not Pants Online uh, 2021. And I'm here with Olivia Wendt and Stefano Panisi, who are uh, with the film Blue Bison. And uh, Cameras Johnson couldn't make it today because he's he's filming Batwoman. So <laughs> that's a that's a very good reason. So let me start with uh, Olivia. Okay. So Olivia, you're you play Glass in the film, and you're also a producer of the film. And I just wanted to ask, uh, how did you how did you get into this film? Do you uh, work with cameras, work with Stefano. Do you all know each other? From so basically, I actually I met um I met cameras at a party. It was it like an Entertainment Weekly Hulu party, oh. and um, we kind of just like hit it off. We did a really silly photo booth thing, and then from there, I you know really wanted to keep in touch with him because I always really have like, and I'm sure Stefano can speak to this as well, like. Cameras is just such a driven person and is just such a force, um, especially when it comes to just his work in general. Like he's just really made it. He's created everything for himself. So I was just like so inspired by him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have to stay in touch with this person. So then he ended up doing a, a reading for Blue Bison and um, he invited me to do it. And I, uh, I actually read for Key at the reading. So oh. um, that's one that Chloe plays. But um, so I went to the reading and then I was just like, hey, can I please be a part of this? Because I would really, really love to do this. And then he was like, yeah, of course, you can help as a producer. Um, oh, cool. Which is perfect. Yeah, because at yeah. the time I was I was uh, working at an ad agency as a like a junior producer. So I kind of knew what to do, but also was still in the, you know, learning about everything. Um and then because I, you know, my passion is acting, I just said to him, hey, look, like I will pull some strings. I'll be this, I'll produce, but I want to be in it too. <laughs> so good. a little <laughs> exchange. Well, yeah. And then, and, 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 you know, you were great. Everyone, everyone was great in this film. I love this Thank film you. so much. I actually, I gave it an 11. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yes. Um, so uh, just Stefano, a quick introduction. Same. Are you, Friends with cameras. How how do how did you all find each other for this film? Uh, yeah, so I met cameras years ago. I um, there used to be this Doritos competition called Crash the Super Bowl, where uh, any independent filmmaker could make a Doritos competition, and if you won, you got a million dollars, and your commercial was aired during the Super Bowl. And so right. it was the final year, and I decided to do it, and then I, I did. A casting session and cameras came in and auditioned for one of the roles um and i mean i gave him the part immediately he was so funny um and we just got along really well and he did a great job and we almost won the competition we we were like in the top 10 out of like five thousand or something oh wow yeah and so thanks yeah it was it was it was but anyways it was, it was very fun and very exciting and cameras and i just like olivia said like immediately like hit it off and so we stayed friends and uh, stayed in touch and he had come to me shortly after and said he had come up with this idea of blue bison mm -hmm. and he wanted to know if I wanted to be a part of it and help him make it. And, uh, you know, he liked what I did on the Doritos commercial. So he's like, you know, he asked if I wanted to co-direct it with him and, and then kind of, you know, just as being an independent filmmakers, just do what we can to get it done. And yeah. so that's, that's what we did. And, and very, very early on in the process, I was introduced to Olivia cause she was involved as, you know, mm -hmm. attached as well. Mm -hmm. And the three of us kind of just became like a, really good to call us the dream team but we were just yeah. all very you know from the start the three of us were just we were like kind of the three people getting it done and, and working tirelessly to to make it happen um well you know. that's really cool because uh you can you, you can really see that that you're that everything's very tight and i i have to say i just want to i just want to get into the question so the you know the opening scene is so good it sutures you in immediately and i love the i love the edits i love the energy i love the beat of the opening so you've got you know edit 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 and then slow mo and then you know this other uh you know staticky and then back to edit edit 
slow. It, it was just so fantastic the way that was that was decided, you know, to do it like that. And I'm curious to know, do do you sort of sit down and talk about this with the editor? I sorry, with the the DP and the editors, or how does that go? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll I'll say a little something and I then mean, I'll let Olivia jump in. Okay. But um, okay. With the with the beginning in particular, actually, like uh, I remember, so we kind of actually ended up having to re we, we ended up reshooting some stuff, the, all the B roll in the beginning. But mm -hmm. for me, what I really liked about the uh, the intro was we had like our our set days of when we were filming filming the short, and, we, and when we did our we did, we did all of our nighttime exterior stuff in in one in one overnight, mm -hmm. and we had basically three locations. We had outside the bar, we had when the character gets kidnapped and then we had the ending scene and, all, and mm -hmm. so we had to not only shoot three scenes, but we had to bounce around and change locations. And so anyway, we, we ended up like running out of time. So that whole opening scene where the character Jeff is walking down the street mm -hmm. yeah. and the homeless person steps up, it's all captured in one shot. And that was basically kind of choreographed and figured out on set because we had to make up for not having as much time. So we're like, we have to figure out a way, to do this in one shot, because if we don't get this done in an hour and a half, we're not going to have time to shoot the final scene of the movie. Right. Um, and then oh, it ended yeah. up turning, it ended up turning out to be my favorite shot, probably of the of the whole of the whole short. So it's it's kind of cool that sometimes you have to become you know you have to just roll the punches and, and adapt to the to the situation. That's that's filmmaking. Right. And then, you know, a lot of times you get forced to be more creative, and you get something like like that opening shot. Well, I have to say that that I, I mean, I've watched so many films and the most important thing is having uh, having that, you know, within the first 30 seconds. So tell me about tell me about the whole cigarette thing. Uh, Olivia. Do you uh, so actually, it's really funny because the the intro, the, the first sequence you're talking about with all the cut edits and like all the the staticky stuff and then the, right. the end. <laughs> We're both kind of um, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong stuff. I don't know, but like they were, they happened later in the game. Like we ended up. I remember you had to go, Stefano. You had to go like reshoot some stuff for the intro, and then like my dad was actually overseeing the edit, so mm -hmm. he's um, he's an editor editor in LA. Yeah, and then he was like giving us suggestions, and then there was one that really popped out to us, which was. Uh, spoke was which was getting everybody to say the line because really mm -hmm. the whole the greater story is that like each kid gets to step up and be this um this leader of this group right mm -hmm. so each person has that moment that axe has right so to kind of show that and show that there's like just more to this story mm -hmm. we actually had everybody read that line and then kind of tried to I don't want to say like tied up with a bow, but like to yeah. bring back that kind of choppy um, yeah. cut. So that was, yeah, that was a really, both of those were so fun too. Yeah. And all, that's a, yeah. That's a good point. I, love, I, love, I forgot, I forgot about that. that yeah. We, like we, Olivia's dad was um, when they were in the edit, was, we had to figure out with the exact, the beginning, like we had to, so we had to figure out exactly kind of how to, Establish this world and so we decided we were gonna so me and the, and the dp bernard ended up like way later on it was halfway through the editing process ended up like we need to go out in new york city and shoot all these establishing shots but we wanted to film in new york that didn't look well we wanted to film a city that didn't look like new york even though yeah. it was new york so we found skyline shots and nondescript architecture that we could just kind of make this city that could be any city really so right the skyline yeah. shot is like is long island city but in a way angle that you wouldn't even recognize it mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah so we ended up running around the city for a while and then but i think you were asking uh, about the cigarette right that was uh yeah i was at yeah specifically about the cigarette in many ways so number one it it's you know right away it adds tension and mm -hmm. and i loved how in the call back at the end olivia you were saying you know everyone read the, the story of the cigarette Yes. And and then the ending was just brilliant. I loved I loved the ending and how it tied. It was just so it was so well done. The other thing I was going to ask you about is um, 
I wanted to ask about uh, the first of all, the premise is fantastic, you know, and it's uh, it's a vigilante film, but uh, it's a vigilante film, but it's more of a, we're going to give you a second chance after we tell you what you've done. But what I loved about it is the fact that the prisoner switches gears, how you, how, how you had the prisoner you, switch gears. Absolutely. No, I think, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said about all of that. I think that, you know, one of the things that really drew me to the story and what I loved from the beginning, um, and this might go a little off topic, but it, Kind yeah, of, no, no, that's fine. Like, is, yeah, you have the idea of these these teenage vigilantes, and it kind of is just teenagers in general, right? But just with like the idea that they they're taking on way more responsibility than, than they're really prepared for, and they're able mm-hmm. to. So they think they're making a difference, and they get themselves in a situation where they kidnap this person, and they think they're doing good, and then they find out that this person has done something way worse than they thought. And that kind of spirals things out of control because they don't know how to handle the situation. And like, you know, mm-hmm. they, they're yeah. actually all in a way, you know, and then they start realizing like, well, they're, they're committing felonies as well. They're committing crimes mm-hmm. as well. And so it's kind of like kind of a, a string where this one, they, they think they have complete control. And as soon as they lose even the slightest bit of control, like not knowing what this person actually did or him admitting to a worse crime, mm-hmm. the entire blue bison gang or organization kind of unravels and they yeah. kind of start spinning out of control and blaming each other. And, you know, and then it's up to Cameras's character to try and maintain, you know, unity and kind of keep everyone together. And then obviously that's not the case. Um, mm-hmm. And then, and then seeing like Jeff, the guy that's in, in the interrogation seat, mm-hmm. you know, thinking he's going to die and then admitting there's something way worse. And then, then, mm-hmm. then like you said, um, he's really just trying to say and do whatever he can to get out of this situation. Yeah. And how genuine is it? Is it genuine? Yeah. Do you choose to believe him? Do you, whose side are you on? Like at that, like, you know, do you, who makes the right, who makes the right choice? Like did cameras make the right mm-hmm. choice? Did, mm-hmm. You know, did Chanky make the right choice? So um, at least oh. that's, that was kind of my, 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 when I read the script, that was my real draw. I was like, this is, this is fun. It's kind of like, it's, I like, I like, cause a lot of times just teenagers in general, like they just think they're on top of the world. Yeah. They can do whatever they want and there's no repercussions. And then well, here's an yeah. example. Our side. Right. I even think that just to call it back, but I think that oh. even goes to like the metaphor of the cigarette, which is like, you know, teenagers just doing something that's mm-hmm. adult. Mm-hmm. Um, right. When it's really right. like, it's a not, a maybe not really, I mean, now we know it's not the, the best decision for yourself. Right. But um, yeah, I, 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 I love what you said, Stefano. Like I, I genuinely, that was the draw to it for me as well. This was like, it was addressing this topic and, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully in a way that, um, you know, brought up some stuff for people. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that, and, and that's, that, that's what makes this film so fantastic because it's gonna, it's gonna make people talk. Um, so I, the other question I have, this is like a, a fun lighter question is what, who, who decided on blue? I mean, I, I, I know what blue bison means. Like blue bison is a protector and like the mm-hmm. reason of the 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 icon but uh so who who made that decision to have the masks who decided did you pick your own did you fight over them like what happened there is what i want to know <laughs> Let me take <it> away. <laughs> okay i will yeah i'll talk no honestly it was kind of a situation where it was like we picked out a few masks well okay blue bison do you want it stuff no it was it was um yeah, and talk came, about yeah that, that that title, correct? You and Cameras came up with that, or was it? Cameras had already Cameras had already come up with the title. He, right. he he'd already come. He had already had Blue Bison, and he had. Um, it was so. It took us a little while to make this. By the way, it was not mm-hmm. like uh, he gave me the script, and six months later, it was done. It was like years. It, it was, yeah. you know, like we had the idea, and then we were gonna. You know, we kept trying to do it. I think I think over the course of like two or three years, it came mm-hmm. up a few times and just with us all being busy and our schedules, it was, it was kind of hard to find the right time. And then we were kind of doing this push and we're like, okay, this is, this is it. This is when we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then cameras, I think 
in the process of us being in pre-production, like kind of loose pre-production, he had auditioned and then got his role in Batwoman. And then it put like a, a timeline. Oh, right. We have to get this yeah. done by like the third week of June because I'm moving to Vancouver and I'm going to be in the show. And if I don't do it now, it's never happening. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I, so it's, it's, so cameras had already come up with the idea of blue bison. And then at some point in some of the revisions, cause you know, throughout the years, there was tweaks to the script and stuff. And I think somewhere along the line, the, the, the idea of, well, the masks, they should all be, I, th I can't remember if they were wearing masks and then we just decided to turn them into animal masks. That mm -hmm. was very early on in the writing yeah. process and I can't, right. I can't remember, but, but it was, but I, yeah, you can go. Olivia. I will tell you some of the masks were actually, we did think about who they should, you know, who we should give them to prior to giving them. Right. Okay. Um, like for example, you see, uh, Joe, he was the one who had the eagle because mm -hmm. he's, you know, up in the sky finding in, out information. And so some of them do um, do relate like to the character or what mm -hmm. the character does. I got a monkey mask. That was just because it was like, this is what we have. <laughs> right. But I, you know, at the end of the day, like it kind of did, it really did work, I think, with, you know, with, with everything that we ended up doing. Um, I, Chloe got the giraffe, which to mm -hmm. us felt very um, key. She got the giraffe, which felt you know very like regal and and smart and but but not really the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. And then you have Shangy, who has the wolf mask. So mm -hmm. they they did some of them were really specific to the character, and then the others were not. But right. But I just I loved what our the costume designer did the wardrobe. Oh, I know. Burns yeah. and everything in them. I thought it was so cool. Well, yeah. I had, Sorry. I had, I, I had, we had found the, the bison mask was one of the last, we, we oh, couldn't yeah. find the right bison mask because we were just like, and then a, I found the one that we ended up using on like Amazon, but like deep within like the dark <laughs> of Amazon, you know? And then like, yeah. I, I got it, I got it uh, sent to my house and we, I, we gave it to the production designer to, to kind of do the final touches, but I got so excited when it first showed up that I like lit it on fire and like, threw it around in my backyard and like just left yeah. it outside for a week and then yeah. I was like, it's like I think I ruined I think I ruined our mask um <laughs> you just but, went wild <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, exactly. okay guys I'm gonna say goodbye bye it was, it was so really great meeting you cool talking to you guys and uh, I really enjoyed this yeah me, me too. too thank you yeah, so much you. okay have All a right. have a great day you too. Okay, thanks. Okay.